Hello everybody, welcome back to The Bomber's Notebook, episode 3, East Side. Or no, that wasn't like, like East Side for you. Wow, I'm out of it. What's up guys, Bomber's Notebook, times 3. Times 3! Um, alright, so in this episode, what, what am I doing? This isn't an LP. In this uh, video we're going to be answering some more questions. Um, when Waker Month, I don't, I'm really out of it. This is probably a really bad take, but that's okay. Okay, so. Oh, um, I'm not drunk. No, seriously, though, I'm not. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but, uh, yeah, okay, here we go. Questions. Wow. Here's the questions for this week. We're going to start with some Zelda questions, um, the first of which we have, like, five from a good buddy of mine. I am the Fused Shadows, or Fused, or Fuseed, uh, which, you know, it depends on your preference what you want to call them. Okay, so... Alright, first question. What do you believe really happened in Link's Awakening? Was it all a dream? Why does Marin appear at the end if it was? I do think it was all a dream. Um, but sometimes dreams are inspired by real events. You know, events in real life. Um, uh, so I think maybe, you know, seeing Marin, maybe maybe she somehow inspired his dream. Even if he hadn't met her before, you know, before the dream. You know, maybe it's just something like that. So I do believe it's a dream because it, it just totally makes sense. You know, all this weird things from the Mario universe, you know. I mean, or it could just be on this weird island that no one's ever heard of, but I think dream is more likely and easier to explain. Uh, let's see. What is your favorite area in Zelda? Uh, I guess you mean in all of the games. I really, really love, um, Lake Hylia from Twilight Princess. It's, you know, nice and peaceful. The music is great. I love the, uh, I liked landing for the first time in Skyward Sword in the woods area there, you know, I, I think that really, it was really cool, you know, just like, it was like, that was when I first got into the game, you know, I mean, of course I was getting into it up in Skyloft, but when I got down to the surface and I was like, yes, it's like, you know, it really feels like a Zelda game for the first time, you know, that was really cool. Uh, there's lots of great areas, I'm trying to think, um, hmm. The first time, there's, you know, there's a lot of things where I like, get into an area, uh, probably like, the Gerudo area, the big cavern, Goron Mountain, and Twilight Princess. There's a lot of cool areas. Um, okay. Which one is a better atmosphere, Twilight Princess or Majora's Mask? That's hard, and you're a jerk for asking that. No, you're not a jerk. But, um, let's see. Uh, honestly, it's really tough. I think I'm going to have to give it to Twilight Princess, because of all the Zelda worlds, it feels the most like a real world. Like, you know... There isn't just one feel like Hyrule Field is gigantic, which it might be boring for some people, but it's the most realistic, you know. Whereas Majora's Mask, although it's cool, it's like you have a a beach, you know, right next to a snowy area, right next to a swamp. It makes really no sense at all, in my opinion. Uh, although I still love the atmosphere of the different areas in particular, but as a whole, I think Twilight Princess probably fits together as a world better, you know. All right, why does everyone hate the Sailing Wind Waker so much? Wind Waker, um. Uh, I don't hate it that much. I mean, I think people just dislike it because, you know, really, it's a very sparse area. Speaking of big worlds, the Wind Waker has probably the biggest, you know. I mean, you know, there's really nothing to do. I mean, there, there are things to do in the world, but it just seems kind of, you know, there's really no variety. And it's, it's like people who complain about Twilight Princess having a barren world, look at Wind Waker. Seriously, there's like, you go on, all you see is blue. Yeah, there's islands, there's, there's like one island in each square, um, well, you know, they call it an island, but it could be like a chain of islands, but, you know, I think that's the reason why people think it's so boring. I don't mind it that much, especially once you get the warping song, it's not a big deal, but it's really not too bad for me. All right, and my favorite collectible in Zelda, I guess you mean, like, things you have to collect in the game, like the pose, the heart pieces, the golden bugs in Twilight Princess, um... I guess the masks would count Majora's Mask. If, if you count masks, they have to say masks. Uh, if not... I liked the, um, I liked getting the bugs in, no, not the bugs, in, whatever you get in Skyward Sword, the, uh, the tier things, not, not the tiers, the gratitude crystals, that was fun, um, it was a pretty easy side quest and I liked it a lot, it was, I didn't actually use a guide for any of it, because I did it 100% in my first run without a guide, but yeah, I like, you know, I like probably the masks the best, because there's so many cool things you can do with them. Okay, um, this next question, another Zelda-related question, a Wind Waker-related question, nonetheless. Uh, will the Wind Waker HD have read-on music? This comes from a lark from Link's Hideaway, or Ryan, I don't know what he wants me to call him. But anyway, uh, let's see. Will it have read-on music? I think probably not, but it might be, like, remastered, you know, like, um, all these new Beatles albums that came out in 2009, you know, or, like, lots of CDs get remastered, and I think maybe they'll probably do something like that for Wind Waker, 
Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. Redoing the, all the music... I'd love to see it redone, but I don't think it's really... Unless they're going for an overhaul or whatever, if that's the right word, you know. I don't think we're really going to see that, even though I would have liked to. But uh, it'd be cool. Yeah, okay. Now let's, uh, let's see. We have a few more, actually, Zelda questions. I forgot. Okay. This first one comes from Cram. All right. Well, this isn't really Zelda-related, but it's more like hero-related. Uh, and it's well, video game related in general. And while we're already at five minutes, I better hurry this up. Okay. How come almost every time the hero of a game is imprisoned, he'll escape on his own, usually it's a he, while the often present damsel in distress does not? That's because manpower. No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't know. I think it's because uh, the idea behind that. I think, well, first of all, you're the hero of the game, so if you're stuck in jail, you know, I mean... It makes sense you get out, but of course you don't always get out on your own. You like Midna helps you out in Twilight Princess. I'm trying to think of another game where you get imprisoned. I don't know. Uh, the Elder Scrolls, you always escape, but you can be a woman there too, I guess. Um, I don't know. I think that the reason why is because the whole idea of a damsel in distress is like you know she has to be rescued. You know, of course Zelda. Everyone thinks you know. Everyone's like, oh, it should be called The Legend of Link because Zelda captured in each game. You have to rescue her. No, um, you know Zelda more often than not, is helping Link out. Like, Sheik, she turns into Sheik, and he helps Link out for, like, a long time. You know, like, like seriously, if it wasn't for Sheik, Link would be, like, jack shit. I'm sorry, I swore I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> if it wasn't for Sheik, uh, Link would, you know, he'd have a hard time getting places, you know, so I think that, you know, although, you know, if, me, people often will say that about Zelda, how she's useless, you know, when it when she is stuck, you know, it's just that whole idea of just, you know, a hero rescuing a a princess, you know, and, well, yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say on that. Okay, uh, this next question comes from Garrett, again, the guy from the site who you should know. If not, I, I feel shame for you. No, you feel the shame. I feel pity. Okay, do you think motion controls will stick around for future Zelda games? Yes, definitely. Um, I don't see any reason why they drop it. Skyward Sword did a really great job. Although I love pressing A to swing a sword. It, I really love the controls for Skyward Sword as well. Or, you, know, you press B, actually, in most Zelda games, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, so I think it's definitely going to stick around. Um, Okay, so hey, this is another question from Fused. Uh, why haven't you watched One Piece yet? For those of you who don't know, One Piece is an anime that's been going on since 1999, I think. And it has like over 500 episodes or 600 or something. And I haven't watched it because I'm currently watching Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I've recently gotten into anime. So for you, those of you who don't know, again, I've recently gotten into anime. I've been watching a lot of Dragon Ball Z. I've seen Princess Mononoke and Spirited Away, Heo Miyazaki Films. And I've seen uh, Devil, Devil May Cry. That's another good one. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I, I've just been watching other stuff. But I probably will eventually watch One Piece, even though I kind of don't want to. Um, okay, let's see. Some more questions from Cram, and uh, let's see. Then we actually have one more from Anonymous again. I don't know if it's the same Anonymous, but it's another Anonymous. So, okay, this first question from Cram. If you and all the other humans in the world had nothing but free time, what would you choose to do with it? Well... I think first I'd get a suitcase, okay? So I take the suitcase, I'd get a bunch of jars of peanut butter, I'd open them up, I would pour the peanut butter once it's liquefied by dumping soda into the peanut butter jars, I'd pour it into the suitcase. After that I'd take some jelly, I wouldn't put it in the suitcase to make a peanut butter and jelly suitcase sandwich, I would drink the jelly. Then that would give me enough strength, even though it's sugar, it's special, you know, it works with my body, I'd give me enough strength to turn into a super saiyan, and then I would grab these crutches here, even though I don't have a broken ankle anymore, I grab the crutches, and um, I proceed to go around town whacking people with the shins on on their shins, you know. After that, I'd probably, you know, I'd probably grab some another pair of pants, and then I'd. Once I had created those two small porcelain figures, I'd go and beat a cow in a field, and then I'd be able to be naming it the first knickknack paddywhack in the history of the world. So that's probably what I would do with my uh, free time. Anyway. What do you think of the idea to use games for educational purposes, like Minecraft? This uh, question again comes from Cram, and I think it's, I think it's a great idea. You know, Minecraft has a lot uh, you can do with it, especially you know I know teachers I know teachers personally who use Minecraft to teach, um, and I think I'm all for it as long as it's not goofing off. You know, because I'm probably there's a good chance I can be a teacher myself, so I have to start you know acting like one, even though I'm still a student in high school. Uh, but um, so yeah, I think it's a great idea. 
Okay, uh, why the hell would you count your fingers out of order? I don't, okay? Index, middle, ring, pinky, thumb, okay? Thumb first doesn't work because your fingers, look at this, okay, right? You get thumb, two. Now, you can't hold your fingers on very well. I'm like, what is this? You know, they're like at an angle, okay? But if you go one, two, three, they stick straight up because you can do this, you can hold down your pinky with your thumb. That's the way Americans do it, so uh, you're an Austrian. Um, I guess it's different for you. I, I know some Americans do this. I just, it's weird, okay? Because, look, your fingers start to, you know, you're at an angle like this. You can't hold them straight up. You have to, like, you can, but it's just like it hurts. Your pink, my pinky's shaking. It's shaking in protest. So, one, two, three, four, five. Thank you. All right, lastly, from Anonymous, why do you have arm spasms? You know, I don't really know. It just started happening when I was a small baby, and I've, it's happened ever since. So, I'll see you guys next time in the Bomber's Notebook. Bye for now. See ya.